I know when it comes to having an addict in the family, it's really easy to make excuses as to why they do what they do or how serious things may be. My sister-in-law passed away almost a year ago to date from a heroin overdose, and I always wanted to think that she was in recovery, that she hadn't been using, she was doing good, she was putting on weight, she looked good. We always made excuses, and we never really dealt with the fact that she was an addict and she really did have a problem. In Beautiful Boy, I feel that Nick's dad knows that there's a problem and knows how serious the problem is, but doesn't want to deal with it head on because he feels partly responsible for it, for the fact that he used drugs and he got a divorce and he felt like he was a big contributing factor into why Nick used drugs in the first place. He said that he knew that Nick uses drugs because he feels clever and that all his favorite bands and artists are doing it. I feel like that's kind of him being in denial as to why Nick really uses drugs. Yeah, it might be popular among the bands and the artists that Nick likes, but nobody does drugs just because. There's always an underlying feeling of emotion, of emptiness, of something that drives you to fulfill yourself with drugs. David talks about how they try to act as if nothing is super wrong about around Jasper and Daisy. Um, how they tell them, or they don't really tell the children details about what's going on with Nick. They kind of try to sweep it under the rug. Like, kids are very observant. They know that something's wrong. And just telling them that Nick is sick and not really explaining why or how is denial. David and Karen take turns telling each other it's not as bad as it seems and that Nick will be okay. They both know that it isn't, but they pretend for each other so that they can hold on to Nick a little bit longer. They're both in denial. Um, I know that they want Nick back and they want Nick to feel better, but, and I, I understand that a husband and wife are supposed to be supportive of each other. So Karen is supposed to be strong when David isn't, and David is supposed to be strong when Karen isn't. But in the aspects of your child being a drug addict and roaming the streets, you should just be real about it. You shouldn't be sugarcoating anything. You should just be like, hey, it might not be okay. We need to do what we can to try to help. David goes on later in um, one of the chapters in Section 3 to state that he will kick him out and withdraw all of his support to get him to go to rehab. He confronts Nick in his room and tells him, hey, you're going to rehab. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. If you want to see us, if you want my help, if you want your college paid for, all of that um, stuff, that he'll go to rehab. I feel like this is when he starts to finally realize that, you know, Nick needs help. And, like, the only thing that's going to help him is rehab and is him getting sober. So I feel like he's starting to accept things a little bit more at that point. But... They're still starting, like, kind of sugarcoating things when it comes to the kids. Um, after Nick comes into the house after sitting in the car for quite some time, after him and David pull into the driveway, he explains to Nick's brother and sister that Nick has a problem and they're going to go get him help and that he can be okay if he does get help. So I don't think that with super young kids you should expose them right away to how hard drugs are and what effects they can have on you. But I definitely think that they should expose them to the fact that, you know, you have feelings and you need to deal with your feelings and things like that. And kids are exposed to so much at a young age. I remember being, you know, in fifth and sixth grade and having kids smoking weed and offering it to me. I mean, I was 14 when I smoked my first cigarette, so I you know, legal age is 18. That's still four years younger than what I should have been smoking cigarettes at. And children need to not be as guarded and as sheltered when it comes to 
drug abuse in their own family. They need to learn that opening up and expressing their feelings is an okay thing. And in chapter 13, um, he starts going back into denial about how bad things really are. Jasper asks his dad if um, Nick's in jail, and he said, no, I called all the jails. And Jasper asks, where is he sleeping then? And David responds, maybe he's at a friend's house that, you know, instead of we can't find him, we don't know what he is, like his problem's bad. And sitting down and talking to the children and telling them exactly what's going on, they're still continuing to tell half truths and and shelter them. So there he goes going back in denial. Um, Karen and David cry together talking about how they can't sleep and how they have visions of Nick dying on the streets alone. Well, it's a possibility that that might happen to their son if they, you know, can't get him the help or if he refuses the help. So I feel like they're at a point where they kind of see that, like, this might not end well. But um, overall, I think that the denial, the accepting, the denial, the accepting, the anger, the frustration, it's all part of the process um, when you deal with a drug addict being so close to your heart. It's, um, it's a hard thing.